uh, in a vernier caliper the uh, the simplest arrangement of a vernier caliper look at board can be marked like uh, can be drawn like this the first external jaw right <clears throat> The second external jaw, right? Uh, when the measuring phases of external jaws touch each other, zero lines of the two scales coincide. Zero lines of the two scales coincide. Then we say. No zero error. No zero error. When external jaws touch each other, if zero lines of the two scales are at the same straight line, it is said that the instrument does not have any zero error. Wait. Uh, if look at board, look at board. Let's say this is the first external jaw, right? Let's say this is the second external jaw, right? Now external jaws are in contact. They touch each other. When the external jaws touch each other, if the main scale zero line is here, and if the vernier scale zero line is at the right hand side, vernier scale zero line is at the right hand side, by making a gap between the two zeros, then it is said that instrument has a positive zero error. Positive zero error. A positive zero error can be found. A positive zero error can be found by the equation least count into coincide vernier number. So this is how we calculate a positive zero error. Positive zero. Got it. Uh, please write them saying a summary. Saying a summary, please write all the things that I have written on the board.
Right. Uh, what is the other thing here? Uh, you should name this, right? This n means coincide vernier number. Coincide vernier number. Coincide vernier number. Right. Uh, let me draw the third one. Negative zero in negative zero error right uh, let me draw the first external job and the second external job Like this. Now the two external jaws are in contact. The two external jaws are in contact. When two external jaws are in contact, when the two external jaws are in contact, right? Uh, Zero line should coincide like this. Then only it is said to be a say uh, that no zero error. We are writing a summary, right? We are writing a summary because we are going to discuss the past paper question. Writing summary is essential, right? Zero lines coincide, no error. The vernier scale zero line, vernier zero line, vernier scale zero line. If the vernier scale zero line is at the right hand side by making a gap between the two zero lines, then it is say the instrument has a positive zero error. Now, uh, the external jaws touch each other. External jaws touch each other. The main scale zero line is here, but vernier scale zero line is at the left hand side. Vernier scale zero line is at the left hand side by making a gap between the two zero lines. Now it is said that the instrument has a negative zero error. Negative zero error. Why? What's the reason? Vernier scale zero line is at the left hand side. Vernier scale zero line is at the left hand side of the main scale zero line making a gap between the two zero lines then he said that the instrument has a negative zero error a negative zero error is found by the equation least count into simple n minus capital n simple n is the total number of divisions on the vernier scale Capital N is the coincide vernier number. So please write down the third point of the summary uh, because we want to discuss past paper questions. We need a uh, complete knowledge, right? Write the summary here. Start. Uh, normally we use simple n to indicate the total number of vernier divisions. Normally we use capital N uh, to indicate the coincide vernier number. So normally we write negative zero error as LC into n minus n. A student has asked a very important question. I'm so happy with it. Uh, that student had asked whether the value of simple n is changed. Yes, the value of simple n may be changed as 10, sometimes simple n is 20, sometimes simple n is 50. So there are changes, simple n can be changed. So that's what we are going to discuss today. And that's uh, that's the end of this lesson and the past paper. So vernier caliper is, a, is the biggest section in units and dimensions lesson. In units, dimensions, measuring instruments lesson, vernier caliper is the biggest section. 
so we should give enough time for it teaching half is not covering the syllabus earlier right if a teacher covers the syllabus without writing a summary without doing enough questions or without discussing all the vernier scales so uh, that's not a good method it is cheating right he may be uh, tell you that uh, he has covered syllabus earlier but it's not a good method right we should not play with a uh, student's life right uh, did you write the uh, have you written all the summary shall we go to the next part because i want to discuss the past paper question today a very important past paper question who wants more time to write the summary Okay, uh, I think you have written. Let me show you uh, parts of a vernier caliper once again. Let me show you the parts of a vernier caliper once again. Please be patient. The parts of the vernier caliper. This tool is a vernier caliper and is very common to the machine shop. This particular one will measure from 0 inches to 6 inches or from 0 millimeters to 150 millimeters. It has two scales on it. It is meant to measure the outside of a part, the inside of a part, or if you have a look down at this end, we actually have a depth rod. We can measure the depth of a part with this particular one here. So it's a very handy tool to have and most machinists will have probably a couple of these in their toolbox. Let's have a look at the parts of it. What I have is several different moving parts on this vernier caliper. These two jaws are the outside jaws meant to do outside measurements. These two are the inside jaws, meant to do the inside measuring. And again, we have a depth rod that comes out the back of it, meant to do depth measuring. You will notice that the one jaw moves and the other jaw stays stationary. This is called the movable jaw. This is called the stationary jaw. As indicated, we actually have a couple of scales on this tool. We have the main scale on the solid jaw and the beam of this vernier caliper. This one here has inches on the top and metric on the bottom. If we move down to the movable scale, you will notice there is a short scale that actually moves. This one here is an inch scale and down below it is a metric scale. This is called the vernier scale and we'll have a look in another video how to read it. We also have a lock nut so if I turn this nut and lock it the jaw doesn't move anymore so there's no chance of getting an error in the reading. Some vernier calipers will actually have a little lever here. If I depress that lever it'll allow it to slide rather than the nut. So again, if we have a look at the parts of the vernier caliper, we have the solid jaw, the main scale on the beam, the movable jaw, which also holds the vernier scale. We have the inside measuring jaws, one solid, one movable the locking nut in this particular one, and the depth rod out the back. We will have a scale on the main beam. This one has two scales, inch and metric. And then we have a sliding scale or a vernier scale. Again, inch and metric. This is a six inch vernier caliper or 150 millimeter vernier caliper, which is the extent 
it will read to. Let's have a look at the parts of the vernier jaw, the main scale on the beam. Uh, is it OK, dear? Is everything clear? Right. Uh, Uh, that figure shows us uh, internal jaws, external jaws, and depth bar. So this part is called the depth bar. Uh, these two are external jaws. And they are called internal jaws. Internal jaws. Right? Here, uh, the first vernier scale, uh, this should be used uh, with centimeter millimeter. And this is uh, marked in inches. So this is the main scale marked in inches. And this is the main scale marked in millimeter and centimeter. Normally we use this uh, centimeter millimeter scale. Normally we use this centimeter millimeter scale. Got it? So what are the names? External jaws internal jaws, uh, depth bar, vernier scale, main scale. Right. Uh, then, uh, let me show you how to use uh, each part of the vernier caliber. Right. So, you see the uh, internal jaws can be measured the internal diameter of a Uh, internal jaws can be uh, can be used to measure internal diameter of a cylinder or a, uh, something like this, right? Uh, something like this, right? Uh, and depth by and external jaws. I